what is a paradigm shift? And I'm going to go over the definition as it's laid out in Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, which is a classic in the philosophy of science. And of course, a paradigm shift is going to be a process of shifting from one version of a scientific field to one that's slightly shifted. And the shift might look something like this, which is where I'm going in this video. And I'm going to describe that process by going through what happens between these three characters in our story. So we've got the heretic, we've got the regular scientist, and we've got the field leaders within that field. And of course, this is as it relates to a specific scientific field like physics or chemistry or biology. And so the first question we have to ask is what is a paradigm? Because we need to know what is the thing that's actually shifting. And for within a scientific field, it's sort of the set of foundational knowledge and the set of questions that are considered part of that field's paradigm. So we've got foundational knowledge down here. And you can think of this as the stuff that's in any textbook for a given field. It's sort of the set of information that everybody's scientific research is building upon. And then as the field builds out, as the field develops new knowledge, they sort of build on that foundation and come up with new discoveries. But of course, there's also an edge to the field, which is sort of what defines the questions that any given scientist can ask within that field. And generally, those questions are going to build upon the foundational knowledge. That is a paradigm. It's this sort of thing that encapsulates a field of scientific research. So you might imagine if this is going to be physics, like the, the paradigm of physics, you have some foundational knowledge, and I won't even try to articulate that because I'm an economist, not a physicist. But if you have questions over there that are very economics-y, like how does the stock market work, that's obviously not going to be a question that's considered part of the field of physics. So if you have a scientist who tries to look at that, um, these people are going to say that's actually not part of our body of knowledge, that's not part of the physics uh, community. And of course, bodies of knowledge are always contained within a community of people, such that no one individual can contain in their brain all of the possible knowledge within that field, but together they can sort of cross-reference each other when they need to know a fact, they know who within the field should I go to, what articles should I look up to find that knowledge. That is a paradigm. Now, the beginning of a paradigm shift starts with a heretic who's going to look at some of the knowledge that is considered foundational in the field. And the heretic is going to start to question that knowledge. Because, of course, reality is complex. And a lot of times you had to sort of um, set aside some inconvenient parts of an experiment or inconvenient realities about the way the field is developing. And for the field to build on, on that kind of knowledge, it kind of has to suppress um, certain information that might be real or might be valid, but would be super inconvenient and frustrating and uh, would sort of throw a wrench in the way uh, this whole field views their own foundational knowledge. Now, of course, most people who start to question the foundation of a field are just going to be wrong. So, of course, there's going to be lots of people up here in the, in the field doing research who are like, actually, that's wrong. I can show you why it's wrong. But sometimes there's actually some validity to the critique of foundational knowledge. And this is where the conflict part of this starts to happen. And that is because this is foundational knowledge that these people's research has built upon, these people are going to be super, super threatened and offended by questioning knowledge that might um, invalidate some of their personal contributions to the field. Like that's going to be personally, egotistically threatening to them. So what generally happens before a paradigm shift uh, goes through is the leaders in the field especially and other scientists within the field start to attack the heretic, um, make things inconvenient for them, exclude them from journals and from conferences because they're doing something that is threatening to the whole community. Now you may have heard the quote, science advances one funeral at a time. And that's basically where this comes into the story. So usually the heretic has to persist and continue questioning this for a while while they are being attacked by the leaders within the field. 
But of course, eventually those leaders retire or die or whatever, so one funeral at a time. And once some of the initial leaders who were threatened by this questioning um, move on from the field, oftentimes what has happened is some of these scientists who are not necessarily the top, they follow what's going on with this heretic. They're sort of like, that's kind of interesting. They do have a point here that that little piece of foundational knowledge has a few cracks in there. It's not perfect. And maybe we should actually start to listen to these people. And moreover, the people who are doing that, and oftentimes they'll do that quietly so that they're not excluded from the field and that they're not sort of socially rejected by this community. Um, they'll sort of watch and read this stuff quietly, but oftentimes they will actually make connections to say, you know what, the, the knowledge that I'm building upon, it doesn't actually fully require this part of foundational knowledge. Like if I'm tracing my, uh, my, my new knowledge back, I can trace it back in a way that doesn't necessarily have to go through this point. And so I'm actually more okay and less threatened by the community that's questioning this uh, piece of knowledge. Now, of course, questioning knowledge is not enough. You actually need some alternative view to explain what's going on. Oftentimes you need knowledge that would replace this knowledge. And that's where the paradigm shift starts to happen. It's when the heretic and perhaps the community of people who have started to, to follow the heretic, let me put those people on the board. So these people sort of join in the critique of this, and as a mini little community, they may come up with new ideas and new knowledge that could replace this as foundational knowledge. And that builds a new foundational knowledge that the field can then build upon. And that really is the paradigm shift. So let me show you that. Okay, so what happened is this community of people that were gathering around the heretic, they actually came up with a new base of knowledge that could be built upon. So this knowledge is actually very connected to this other knowledge and especially the old foundational knowledge that didn't get debunked might be one word for that. I, I don't love that word, but debunked um, by, by these people. Um, and they, they built that new foundation which could then be built upon. And oftentimes then the heretic and their community of people who come up with the new foundational knowledge over here, those people will eventually become leaders in the field. They will eventually sort of guide what is considered part of this community of knowledge. And of course that means that these scientists are going to sort of, they're going to connect their knowledge to the new knowledge base to sort of make sure actually I, I have connections that, that connect with this field. So even as the field expands, we're not leaving these people behind, we're just connecting what they're doing to a bigger set of things. Now one controversial element here is that when you have a paradigm shift that sort of rejects some foundational knowledge, sometimes it rejects it too much and you could have knowledge that's actually lost. Um, for example, if we just completely get rid of this node, maybe there actually is something to that node, it just doesn't fit well with the new foundational knowledge, so maybe these people will reject it, and maybe in some future situation, um, some of these heretic scientists will come and try to reconcile this in a way that it hasn't been reconciled. So that's a paradigm shift. Now, of course, this is all within an academic community or a scientific community, but what about people's general use of the term paradigm shift? And I think sometimes it's just misused or it's used in a way that doesn't um, square very well with uh, Thomas Kuhn's version of paradigm shift. But I also think there can be paradigm shifts in terms of how people are thinking about bodies of knowledge that we are expanding that are not necessarily housed in an academic department. And of course, on this channel, I'm interested in basically three paradigm shifts that I think are um, relevant right now, that where we could see something happen really fast uh, due to changes in the economy and artificial intelligence. 
And these are paradigm shifts in the economy, the, the way we govern, perhaps bringing digital tools into the mix, and epistemics, which is how we know what is true, or basically how we structure knowledge creation. And all of those are sort of these bigger communities, but they're still contained in some kind of community. So I think paradigm shifts don't have to just be in academic communities. It's really any community of people that's trying to build out a problem. But you do, need, you do need some version of what is a relevant question that could be connected to the foundational knowledge, because the paradigm shift is really about the expansion of that foundational knowledge.